Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcat production, with your hosts, Melanie Hope and James Monis. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. <laughs> As you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're watching our live show, hit like and join the chat. If you're listening dead, well, you can still hit like, share, subscribe, and comment, but please stop voting Democrat. Meow. Hello, everybody! We begin another counterculture wise a podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful, sunny Sunday here on counterculture wise estates, I guess we can call it. <laughs> We're watching many, many birds and squirrels and all kinds Filled of Filled the things bird outside. feeder today with yeah. brand new seed, and they are going oh, they are. absolutely bats we today. We've got bright red cardinals. We've got finches and we've got a bird I haven't quite figured out what he is and then we've got a painted warbler something I don't know I'm still looking him up but lots of bird action out there and teaching Sadie to chase the squirrel so they get off the bird feeder but all she wants to chase is the ball anyways it's a beautiful sunny day no storms this week yay, yay. well I mean so far it is still Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're, we're bound to have a little bit more yeah, rain, but I don't think about crazy. but nothing like blankets and yeah. walls of rain coming down and tornadoes soaking the world. and wind and lightning. It's been and just, crazy. It's been insane flooding and yeah, it's been crazy. So it's nice to just get a reprieve for a day or two. The birds are very happy about it, and hopefully very. tonight the fireflies will be too. <sighs> I am your hostess with the mostest, Ms. Melanie Hope, and here with me in the blazing hot studio is my husband, my co-host, my very best friend, and of course, my sweet baboo, Mr. James Modus! <sighs> Yay. <laughs> wow. The Did you hear about the chameleon who couldn't change color? No. He had a reptile dysfunction. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> I thought that was worse that's, slash better than usual. That's, that's a all. dad joke that the kids wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> My kids wouldn't. Not until they were 18. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, that's actually that's a pretty good, good one. That's pretty good. Pretty good that, one. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Any uh, news you want to fill in the... the I am con I am continuing on my education with Christian Leaders Alliance, and I just received my certificate in um, Christian officiant, uh, being a Christian officiant. And it's not a full. It's not a full ordination. It's not it's. Yet. We're we're working on that. I, I mean, I already am ordained, but you are taking on a new role. I am. Well, that's not official yet. Mm. It's not official yet. It has to be right, voted on. We won't on. announce it. We won't announce then, it. I'm not going to announce anything until it is. No fake news on this on this podcast. No yeah, podcast. there's enough fake news going on around the world. We'll get we'll, we'll get, we'll get that. into that later in the yeah. in the show. Um, but I am very happy that uh, that's going on. Um, there's a possibility I may have a position at a former employer, which would be a major. Major good thing. That would be awesome. Yeah. If I if it's the same employer I'm thinking. About. I'm think it is the same one that you're thinking and, and you about. Think their chances are good. I think the chances are good, but it being a government job, it's going to be a while before I hear from them. Yeah. So we're going to have to likely. get filler filler jobs. Hey, anybody filler hiring? jobs. <laughs> anybody need a dentist? Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Oh. 
be as good a dentist as I've ever had, that's for sure. Yeah, you just had the worst. I mean, we're not going to get into details. (laughs) Let's Let's just say that our sketch, Accidental, that we did a couple years ago, it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. Yeah, and Um, it's only gotten worse. Yeah. So, But Max Max is looking forward to a uh, A a sequel on that one, (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So he's last, been, he's been ba- badgering us about another full length feature like like a quantum another, of bollocks. Yeah. Quantum of bollocks. Yeah. I don't know if I can top that one or if Max can top that one. We'll yeah. try. And we'll Agent try. Orange hasn't been around for a while, so he must be working on something super. Yeah, secret. he is. We can't talk about it yet. It's um, not. It's not. Um, okay. It's not been released to the public yet. All right. Well, we so we have a lot of things in the hopper that we oh. might get to some of our old oldies and goodies, uh, folks. Wherever you might be right now, well, please drop everything. I don't have the. Uh, I'll just say for ouch that. anyway. Ouch. ouch. Drop ouch. everything, and ouch. I'll play the noise later. <laughs> uh, head on over to counterculturewise.com where you can check out ways that you can help us. But if you are listening on any of the podcast menus on YouTube, on BitChute, of course, on Locals, and all the places that we can be found, please. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, leave us a 200 billion star review. And if you hate our ever-loving guts, head on over to counterculturewise.com, click on the button that says ID10T form, fill that out, and we will give it the attention it deserves. As usual. Right here on the podcast. As usual. Okay. I think I got all that out of the way. Yes, you did. Yes, now and we'll let's... be adding more and more to our website because we do have some sponsors and we do have some ways to help you with discounted items and things that you might enjoy and all kinds of other ways that you can help us help you help us. <laughs> we'll pull out the chart later. <laughs> no circles and arrows, yes. You said that you wanted to follow up on a story that we talked about last week. Yeah. And you've been mad as a wet hen all week about I this. I am blown away because, as I said before, I didn't get too deep into Boy Scouts of America, but I was a Cub Scout for a couple of years. And I cannot believe just how far this organization has fallen. Um, at the time, I was a, a Cub Scout. Boy Scouts were at a an all-time high of 4 million members, and now it's at about 1 million. And after what I'm about to reveal, I would say if you have a kid in that, I don't care, boy or girl, get them out. These guys do not deserve your money. So they don't deserve sad. your attention. I mean, these used to be the, 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 the pillars of, I mean, I was a Girl Scout, and Boy Scouts were like the thing. I mean, that was... All right, so tell us. I'm I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this was a letter to BSA, Boy Scouts of America. Which is now by, no longer that. Well, they're going to be, they're going to change the name next year. Hopefully by then, the, I mean, they'll be even less relevant than they are now. But this is from a, comp, a organization called Surviving Scouting. And it is, you can find out more by going to survivingscouting.org. This is a letter that was written. Which we're looking written at right now. To the... CEO of Boy Scouts of America. February, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just need to read a a few bits and pieces. February 18, 2024 was exactly four years since the Boy Scouts of America, BSA, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Even before filing for bankruptcy on February 18, 2020, it was clearly evident to us that the BSA was not acting in good faith to be fair and equitable to the 82,209 Boy Scouts child sexual abuse survivors that will become creditors Um. or claimants. Yeah, I read the number freaking correctly. Um. In the bankruptcy, despite repeated promises. What? 82? Here's some more. I'm I'm skipping some of this because it's it's a long letter because these things usually are. Among several significant concerns as the bankruptcy process moved forward... The BSA did not release approximately 7,776 files of perpetrators that are in their infamous perversion files until October 2023. What? Yeah, I'm going to click on, you click on where it says perversion files for our fine audience to see. You're going to see thousands of sex offenders who were allowed to be Scoutmasters and other leaders within the Boy Scouts. Uh, Un be damn leaveable. Sorry. One of 119. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 
How could the victims be expected to make informed decisions when all the case information was not available to them? It seems to us that this failure to provide these approximately 7,776 files was intentional. Oh I my think so. God. This was such a significant concern that a deadline to file for an independent review option was extended from October 19, 2023 to February 16, 2024, so that the attorneys would have time to review the files when they were finally released. It is all I'm also. I'm gonna cry. This is horrible. This is also important to note that approximately, once again, 7,776 files of BSA perversion files perpetrators have still not been publicly released. This failure means that today's children may may, may will still be at risk from these so predators. These guys are still... Get your children out of this freaking organization, so dude. These, these guys, all of these perverts that are listed, could still be scout leaders. Right uh huh. Now? This guy's even wearing his scouting outfit. Yeah. 11-year-old, 14-year-old, 16-year-old attempted enticement of a minor, sexual exploitation of a minor. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to skip down. This is like... The, you, you're you not going to be able to believe this. Just read this because it's insane. But to Roger Crone, the new BSA CEO, we want you to know that there's an ever-growing united coalition of extremely angry Boy Scouts, child sexual abuse survivors, and we're going to get louder and louder. We have been watching closely and sadly are not anywhere near convinced that anything has or will ever change. Children are still not safe in your organization, and you and Glenn Pounder, what an unfortunate, what an last, unfortunate name, last name, are your new youth protection executive, have not done anything other than the same BSPR spin. If you are, I'm going to read this whole part, it's long. Bear with me, folks. If you are sincere about wanting to protect children and truly want to be fair and equitable to those the BSA have failed miserably, you will do all of the following. Release all perversion pile, f- piles. Try again. Release all perversion files to publicly there, report... There's literally steam coming off his head, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pissed. To publicly report all known perpetrators, including those previously released with redacted names or listed with numbers instead of names. Explain why they weren't all already released and why were the ones that were recently released, only released long after the bankruptcy was filed, voted on, and settled. Contact every state's attorney general and provide them with lists of all the BSA perpetrators like you did after Michigan's attorney general, Dana Nessel, required, requested a list from you so they could then investigate, arrest, persecute, and convict. I think they meant prosecute. And convict the first perpetrator. I'm fine perpetr- with persecute. That per- you can persecute them too. And convict the first perpetrator related to the BSA bankruptcy. For any attorney general not interested in the list and pursuing investigations, let us know. We will let everyone know. We'll have a chart following activity or lack thereof. Demand that the statute of limitations for child sexual abuse be eliminated retroactively. Demand that all non-disclosure agreements for child sexual abuse be eliminated so victims can share and have their voices heard. Only exception being is when the child sexual abuse survivor wants an NDA for privacy or other purposes. Right. Demand that mandated reporting be enforced, including clergy. How is that not already a thing? Demand the creation of child sexual abuse specialized courts. I just read on because I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Implement all suggestions by Michael Johnson... Former BSA Youth Protection Director who has repeatedly said the Boy Scouts of America is not safe for kids. He said that. Fix the com- yes. Fix the compensation <laughs> calculator on the BSA restructuring org website. Explain why it stopped working, how those numbers will compare to what's really going to happen, and confirm it played a key role for claimants to make a decision on their votes to reject or accept the proposed bankruptcy settlement. Okay, so uh, uh, are you thinking... That the reason they're opening the BSA to girls is not so much that they want to be inclusive, but just so that they can get their hands on another set of children? I don't think that. I think it's just because they need the money. They're taking scouts away from Girl Scouts, which is wrong. There's no, I've never heard anything about Girl Scouts of America or any other Girl Scouting organization in the world having the kind of issues these guys do. They're just... Needing fresh meat, and why, I just mean it, that. Why to, is it always little boys? What What is it with? I, I, is, is the Boy Scouts Catholic? I mean, what is no, going on it, here? No, it was it was ostensibly a. I mean, you have to profess a belief in God to become a scout. 
Not yeah, I remember um, as a Girl Scout on my honor, I will try to serve God, my country, and mankind. Yeah, yeah it's the same. The Girl Scout rule. It's really basically the same. The very, very similar. Yeah. I love that we have to say try. <laughs> yeah, try, because we're human. The BSA will have a link directly to BSA bankruptcy information website on the foot of all BSA websites. We've been, well, you will maintain and update the real status of BSA bankruptcy until it's completed. I'm, see, whenever you say BSA, I'm no longer hearing Boy Scouts of America. I'm hearing, you know, bull- Bullshit the of America. Like assholes or something. Yeah. I pardon my French, but what yeah. in... I had no idea it was this bad. I had no idea. I didn't either. This is why I'm so upset. This was supposed to be a great God-fearing organization, and now it's just a scout leader and, fearing. And see, th- this is what atheists point to. That you know this this. Yeah. And and it, folks, if you're not a believer, this is in the Bible that there would be false prophets that would use the name of Christ mm-hmm. in order to do evil in the world. And yeah, I, I'm just saddened that it's the Boy Scouts that breaks and it's, my heart. And it, it goes on and on and on. Well, at least their demands are clear. Very. It the it ends with. Today you have a choice as to how you'll be remembered in the not so distant future when a museum for child sexual abuse survivors in their honor dot org show how institutions like the BSA hid and protected perpetrators and tried to silence Boy Scout child sexual abuse survivors. We will not be silenced. Good. Good. It just goes on and on and on. And you know perfectly good and darn well they're not going to do this stuff. I just... It, it, it infu- it's infuriating. Well, somebody in leadership that really is a Christ-fearing, decent human being gets in there. It'll happen. I... I think it's just... It's, it's kind of like... It's become such a bureaucratic... Yeah, it's become juggernaut. bureaucratic and, and it's, uh, it's just entrenched. It, hurts my heart to think that something like this is even needed. What has been happening to these babies, these poor little boys? It's, I it's, mean, I can't even say where are the parents because the parents thought that they were entrusting them. No, I mean, you, you go... I mean, you, usually the Boy Boy Scout troop leader is like your neighbor, somebody that you know. It's a neighbor. It's usually the parent of with. one of the kids. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, at least it was when I was a kid. Well, when I was yeah, in Boy, that, I mean, that's Cub who Scouts. our troop leader was—was was a parent of one of the kids. Yeah. You know, my my mom did it for a while, and and a, a friend of mine. But there, I mean, they're, that they're I'm still just in contact based, with. Her mom they're, did they're, it for a while. You they're know, poised for future downfall, even even more. Well, how because many they, of these leaders were groomed as children through the organization, and it was just they were brought up that way. You know, I, there's no way of knowing. Because nobody, because we will never know the full truth. It's just not doable. There's been too many. Set over seven thousand seven hundred offenders. I, now this, I don't now to be words. sure, this know. this has taken place over decades. It's not something right. like over the last two years or something. But still. But Why I mean, a been... lot of I mean, if you go back to the beginning, I mean, a lot of them are dead now. There's not. You can't. What are you gonna do? Dig them up and smack them? You know, it's it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. I wonder if Joe Biden was ever. A oh, I he's a yeah, he's another well, he's, story. He's into that. <laughs> well, I guess he likes little girls more, but yeah, he's just into Miss Breck. It doesn't matter. Um, it's alone a, away, but I mean, I'm looking at. You can go on this website and scroll. 119 pages of these. Yeah, you read a lot of them are gone. Yeah, so a lot of them are dead and gone. They'd have, have to be. Images. Yeah. But you can click on them and see... Oh, well, a lot of them don't have images. Oh. But yeah, you can click on them and you can see... No, they got a QR code. 1966 perversion files. Archived PDF. Yeah, so some of these go way back. Yeah. Yeah. But some of them are still there today. I mean, yeah, there's no accountability. There's no accountability, or, or insufficient, insufficient amount of it. Some of these are wearing orange jumpsuits, though. So mm, some of them got. Busted. Yeah, some of these these are mug shots. Fourteen year old arrested. Multiple offender. Family friend plea deal. These are, I guess you can sort by those. So mm-hmm. multiple. Look at oh my. 
Isn't it just it's disgusting? One of them, yeah, here's a, it's here's a Catholic priest, of course. Yeah. Don't get me started. This is horrific. This, yeah, I... Get him out. Get him out of public schools. Get him out of this. Get him, get him away. Get them away. Oh, these poor people. Okay, well, I almost even hate to bring up the next story because next uh, story pales in comparison. Pales with in all comparison. with all due respect to the uh, deceased. So rest rest in peace, Mr. Colin. Um, he was a he was a founding member of the band Train, and he had he, you know, the big uh, their big hit was Drops of Jupiter, and he was he was deeply involved in that song. Uh, Charlie Collin, a founding member of the American pop rock band Train, has died at age 58. It's pretty young. I mean, that's yeah, like it's pretty young. Your age. <laughs> yeah, but he was he was. I didn't think that was young back when I was in my 20s. Well, no, now no, that of we course are not. That age, it's like wow, that's a little young. I don't feel yeah. like I'm ready to. But this is awful. He all he died in an awful way. He, yeah. he slipped and fell in the shower. And he was house sitting for a friend in Belgium, and then you know the. They found him after his friends found him after being on a trip for five days. Yeah, it doesn't say how Mm -hmm. long he was there, and he was a good looking dude. Yeah, he was a good looking guy. So, yeah, I guess they spared us that detail, and we didn't know how long he was. This article Mm -hmm. cracks me up. Uh, Let's see if there's any of them here. Uh, Maybe it's not this article. I was reading an article where every single picture of him they circled it and pointed to it. (laughs) I thought that was pointed to him. I thought that was hilarious. But But he's um, he he left the band due to substance abuse issues. Unfortunately, that was some time ago. Looks like he cleaned himself up though. Yeah, and you know to go that way that stinks. But anyways, um, wow. Well, we started this one with a bang. I I say we move on to. Weird and wonderful. I think so. I think I, we need some good I, stories. There's nothing. There, there's a lot of weird and nothing wonderful about the what we started with, but I just felt it was really important to shine a light on the darkness here. That was yeah. That's what we're called as Christians and of to do. That's what we we're will, called as. We will have all of these links on counterculturewise.com. Absolutely. If you're interested in, in following up on that. <laughs> Counterculture Wise is proud to present News of the Weird and Wonderful. Here are your hosts, Melanie Hope and Jim Monis. Right. News of the Weird and Wonderful, my favorite part of the show. And we get to start I with I thought the... every part was your favorite part. Okay, I'm busted. Just like every single one of my students is my favorite. But in don't tell the rest of them. Indeed. I tell them that all the time. <laughs> I hope none of them are listening now. Oh, nah. I don't. Most of them, they're like, you have a podcast? And, you know, I've been their tutor for like four years. Then they find out I have, you know, books published on Amazon. And then they look at my website and they're like, wait a minute. I've been talking to a famous person all this time. And I'm all like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as far as they're concerned. <laughs> Hey, I think it's wonderful that you Hey, do I got things. a whole six dollars and thirty five cents in royalties last month, I'll have you know. Indeed. Save up, I might be able to buy a cup of coffee. There you go. Not a burger though, not anymore. Yeah, uh <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's seven dollars to buy like a, a Big Mac or a Whopper these days. It's like or it's in that neighborhood, which yeah. is crazy. No, some of them used to be like three bucks just a few years ago. I remember ninety nine cent menus. Well, ain't got yeah. those anymore. <laughs> I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I remember when you could get five dollar footlongs. That wasn't so long ago. Yeah. That actually was a, and, just a few years ago. And now they're thirteen, fourteen dollars. Yeah. For a six inch. <laughs> it's you know, the whole point of going out for fast food like that is it's I it's mean cheap. It's cheap yeah. and it's yummy. Now yeah. it's just yummy. And yeah. <laughs> And the people that they're paying fifteen dollars an hour to quote well, that, unquote, that's, serve you that, all are terrible. Not to get too far off, but the federal minimum wage right now is seven dollars and fifty cents. I don't know any employers who actually pay that no. little, but now it's about to go up on July first, if I understand correctly, to fifteen dollars. Oh. Literally to become I don't know for sure, so don't quote me and come back and wow. say you're... Wow, so everything is going to get more expensive. A and those, lot And more. those of us who make about $15, $16, we basically get a paid cut. Yeah. Yeah, this this happened to me when Washington State increased their minimum wage, because mm-hmm. I was right at it. Mm-hmm. Everything got more expensive, I essentially got a pay cut. 
And it didn't that's help. one thing. It didn't help. I, anybody. I, I'm not just speaking for Ms. Hope and myself. This is not something anybody can afford unless you are like really well off. And I'm sick of them saying living wage, living wage. Honey, it's a minimum wage job for a reason. That's where you get started and you learn. You're not supposed to live on that. That's supposed to be a teenager after school or a yeah, college Yeah, who student still lives between. under their parents' roof who are paying right. them. That's, when I had those jobs when I was a kid, that was strictly for spending money for yeah, me. If, if you're like a mom you of know, four and that's how you're supporting your family, you've that, done uh, something habit. really, really wrong. <laughs> okay, well, we are not wonderfuling. Let's get into some wonderful. Yeah, this was wonderful. Speaking of beef, how's that for a transition? All right. <laughs> Moo. Moo. All righty. We have for your consumption. Mm, consumption. Oh, he's not a cow. He is a steer. A six-year-old Holstein steer from Oregon has been officially named the tallest in the world at a height of six feet and four point five inches. That just doesn't seem like all that large to me. Well, we're or talking. Tall. I guess Holstein. We're talking cattle. We're not talking. You know. We, Buffalo. Okay. Buffalo or... Okay. Yeah. Misty Moore, founder and operator of the Welcome Home Animal Sanctuary in Creswell, said six-year-old steer Romeo has lived at the facility since he was rescued from a veal crate at a dairy farm when he was just 10 days old. Aw, he's had a happy Folks, life. I hate veal, veal is delicious. Don't no, eat it. No, I have it, no... It, dude, there's I so many other it. delicious things, like one of those $7 Big Macs. In the dairy industry... I would industry, never eat veal or foie gras. I would never, ever... Ever do it? I, I did mean, when I was younger and didn't know what was yeah. I don't even want to what know was what it, involved. I don't you even don't. Want to know what it, what, what you it don't. Is like. In the dairy industry, male calves like Romeo are often deemed as mere byproducts. Their destinies predetermined by profit margins. But fate had a different plan for Romeo that day. More told Guinness <laughs> World Records. It just sounds so dramatic. Yeah, it really, like. really does. In the Hall of Justice. Moore said she decided to seek the Guinness World Records title for Romy after discovering the previous record holder, a Massachusetts steer named Tommy, was only six feet and one inch tall. Now, where do they measure from? Is it the withers, or do you have to get him to stand with his head very high? Hopefully we'll find out. I don't okay. know. Hold your head up. With every nuzzle and every playful skip, Romeo reminds us of the profound bond that exists between humans and animals, a bond built on trust, nurtured by love, and strengthened by solidarity. And as we look into Romeo's eyes, we see not just a steer, but a symbol of resilience, a beacon of hope, an AOC, a, uh, no, right. uh, a beacon of hope, and a gentle reminder that every act of kindness, no matter how small, has I'm the power to change the world. I've not seen any beacons. I'm seeing beef, but maybe I'm just not. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I think they would Congratulations, have been, Romeo. I think they went a little not, bit overboard. For not becoming a veal cutlet on somebody's yeah. plate in an Italian restaurant in the Bronx. That's a all beacon I'm of hope, a gentle reminder, every act of hope. Okay, all right, all right. I won't eat the dang cow. Jeez. <laughs> You're this, safe, Romeo. <laughs> these next couple of stories don't fall under the weird or wonderful so much as they do why. Oh, so maybe weird, wonderful, and why now? Okay. No, not the, not just this one time. But we do love record breakers. These we are do, fun. but this is just odd. Though. Idaho man juggles blindfolded for over an hour. Okay. <laughs> I won't play the video because that sounds boring. <laughs> Serial record breaker David Rush, I think we have on, reported on We have before. reported on before. He, Returned he's pretty... to his roots by recapturing his first ever Guinness World Record title, longest duration juggling three op objects. So he's breaking his own title. Mm -hmm. Or did somebody break it in between? Uh, why are you asking all the questions? Just read the because article. Because you're you older than me. Out. I just assume you know that stuff. I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, Russia has since broken more than 250 Guinness World Records. I wonder he, if there's a world record for breaking the most world records. Achieved his first title in 2015 one. when he donned a blindfold and juggled for 6 minutes and 34 seconds. Wow, he beat this by a mile. Yeah. The record-breaking enthusiast has returned on the record to three occasions to increase his time, most recently managing to juggle for 32 minutes and 7 seconds in 2021. Hey, six minutes is, is a, one heck of an accomplishment. I juggle for about six seconds. Thunk, 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 and I'm mm -hmm. done. Yeah. <laughs> I might catch one of them on a good day. He lost the record for the first time in eight years when an Australian performer clocked a time of 43 minutes and 30 seconds. So you know he's been like practicing and grumbling. Rush said recently setting the record for the longest duration juggling at 13 hours and 10 minutes served as preparation to retake the blindfold version of the record. He managed to juggle blindfolded for one hour, three minutes, and four seconds before dropping a ball, more than enough to recapture his title. 
Rush now holds 170 concurrent Guinness World Records, bringing him closer to his goal of overtaking Silvio Saba, who currently holds 180. Ah, so it is a competition. Yeah. All right. I want to know there if are. there is a who is there a world record for world records. So I bet you he, I bet you he's in the running. All right, the next one is also a why. A Nigerian wig maker added a second Guinness World Record to her resume when she stitched a hairpiece that measures almost 12 feet wide. Helen Williams, 31, who previously earned the Guinness World Record for the longest handmade wig at 1,000 152 feet and 5 inches, took on the challenge of creating the world's widest wig. Williams spent one month creating her latest masterpiece from more than 800 bundles of hair, successfully creating a wig that's 11 feet 11 inches wide, one inch wider than a Mini Cooper is long. I'm looking at the Guinness World Record uh... Instagram page and there's some weird ones on here. Oh, there's all kinds of weird ones. <laughs> I used to I used to get the book when I was a kid. How many can you stick to your face? I my, mean, there are some. My, my parents opened a uh, savings account at a now defunct savings and loan in L.A. and one of and they got a Guinness Book of World Records for it. And I've been obsessed with it ever since. Yeah, it's fun know. to see just the weird. As a professor, when we when we get our RV and and our our studio becomes the roving counterculture wise, it's almost a given now, folks, based on some information we <laughs> I, received. I but, I want to visit the world's largest frying pan and the biggest ball of twine. I want to see all of those sideshow things just just because. It, it, wouldn't that be fun to add that to our show? Yes. Just this week's, uh, you know, anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> And that means both of us have to be able to work on the road again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's a ways away. As a professional wig maker, continuing the article 20 <laughs> minutes later, Sorry. I, I look forward to breaking many more records in the wig category. I enjoy taking on difficult tasks. It makes me a better person and I learn new things, Williams told Guinness World Records. Williams said the wig, which she decorated with 1,000 rhinestones... Like a cowboy is on display in her office. I, I want my children and great grandkids to show up and see the widest wig. She said the wig is now part of history. I wonder what she used to make it stay up. It's got to be heavy. Don't know. It would have to be like major stuff. You're right. Yeah. I like the rhinestones idea. That's kind of cool. And of course it's a ginger because everybody <coughs> wants to be a ginger. <coughs> Everybody wants to be, but only a few of us. She's not smiling in the picture. It's no, like, she's not. She looks very sad. That's because she's done with it and has to move like, on to something else. And it, besides, the thing weighs 57,000 pounds. At least, pounds. yeah. Probably has some, like, uh, saw horses holding it up. It's, it's like, probably exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. They don't show the whole thing. It's, it's, no, they don't. It's an Instagram really wish, photo. So I really it's, wish it's they a, did. That would yeah. be much more impressive look. So this is interesting. I wanted to actually see the whole wig. Mm -hmm. Since it's kind of cut off, and yeah. I found something I did not know. So they What's haven't that? updated it in the search yet. So currently, Danny Reynolds, an Australian, measures eight feet six inches with the widest wig, and it's every bit as hideous as you can imagine. I would imagine. But this record breaking wig was certified by Guinness World Records and surpassed the previous record held by. Yes. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Who wore a wig measuring seven feet, four inches on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon in 2017. So I found the video of them doing this. I guess they specifically made it for her so that she could break the record. Oh, okay. But now it's been since broken twice. You're about to break the record for wearing the world's widest wig. Let's bring out the wig. This wig measures... Seven feet, four inches. Okay, like... It's official, it's an official. <laughs> it is an official Guinness World Records yes! title. Okay, so they still have the Australian. They haven't brought in the, the new lady yet. So ours is breaking news. Yay. Breaking news because they have not updated it yet. And there are no pictures of this lovely lady anywhere. I would like to see her not... Being sad. What is yeah, her she name? Yeah, she looks very sad. Helen Williams. Okay, if I try to look up Helen Williams, you're just I'm you want you'll have to put the word wig afterwards yeah. for sure. Helen Williams or Guinness. Williams, world's whitest wig. 
da, 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 created, yada, yada, world breaking with, but not seeing any pictures. I'm seeing pictures of the, the longest one. I just, ah, oh, here we go, found one. Boy, it took some sleuthing, but I found it. Let's see if I can bring it up here. It's like, wow, I really had to look for that. Okay, so there is its wig in its entirety, and it basically looks like a curtain rod. <laughs> so now we know what the wig looks like. I wonder what it's made out of. That can't be real hair. Well, it is actually based on real hair. So it is 11 feet, 10 inches long. And she's and actually somewhat kind of smiling in that one. Yeah. She, she looks like a fashion model very soon. So that was interesting. I mean, who knew Drew Barrymore had set a world record? Of course, it's been unset. Yes. Okay, cruising right along. Well, we're back to our friend here. Wait. Yeah. Stop the presses. Okay. Dude's He's busy. back. He's back. Oh, this just happened. This just now like happened. Today. Okay. Today. All right, Mr. What's his name again? His name is David Rush. David Rush. Serial Guinness world record breaker David Rush covered his head in shaving cream and bounced table tennis balls to earn his 171st <laughs> concurrently held title. Uh, Rush. I can't believe that's a thing. <laughs> who previously broke the record for most table tennis balls, bounced in cotton shaving foam on the head in 30 seconds, team of two, multiple times, took on the individual version of the same record. Who sits there and dreams these up. He does. He said the Guinness World Records rules for the title required him to bounce the table tennis balls off a wall and catch them in the shaving cream on his head. Rush ended up catching 14 of the balls, tying the record previously set by California man Ronald Sarchian in May 2023. The two men are now co-holders of the record. Uh, he only needed one more ball. The title marked, he'll do it. You know he's going to do it. The title marked Rush's 171st concurrently held Guinness World Records title, bringing him closer to his goal of 181, which would make him the world's top record breaker with the most concurrently held titles. He'll probably have it within a week. So he'll be the world record breaking world record, world record breaker. World record breaker, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, and now back to our regularly scheduled... You do you, buddy. All right. <laughs> Max sent this one, but he um, he had a few things he wanted to say about it, but I, oh. I, I think they're doing him a solid, so... Max, of course, is quite svelte and has never had this issue, but he thought this was uh, quite indignant. A fat cat that weighs more than double his healthy size has been thrown into the deep end on a mission to lose weight by swimming. Moses, who weighs as much as a French bulldog, <laughs> oh my, That's pretty big. started the unusual hydrotherapy sessions in a bid to slim down in much the same way that people with bad knees, a bad back, bad hips, or too great a body mass index use pools to start exercising. The nine-year-old cat piled on the pounds after refusing to go outside or exercise despite his owner putting him on countless diets. At Avondale Veterinary Center in Wellsbourne, Warwickshire. Staff say that his weight loss mission is going swimmingly. Uh, wah, 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 wah. When he first came to us, Moses was nearly 10 kilograms in weight. You should probably do that with a British accent. Said mm -hmm. Olivia Stokes, a veterinary hydrotherapist, meaning he was 22 pounds. That's nice of them to give us yanks, the actual measurement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his owner said he had been on diets and had been encouraged to exercise before, but had still not been able to lose weight. Poor kitty cat. I mean, Fritzy's a little plump, but she gets around. She does her thing. Mm -hmm. So we decided to try a different approach which, with hydrotherapy. And I've been in the industry for five years and a qualified hydrotherapist for almost two years. And I have never experienced hydro with a cat before. So Moses was a first for me. And my cousin actually did that. She had a pool for dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't for weight loss. It was mainly for, you know, joints and whatnot. But right. That's, that's actually quite an industry. Obviously, this was because Moses didn't like water. That's mm -hmm. true for so many cats. You would neither if you had to clean yourself with your tongue. Stokes tried a variety of toys and treats to get Moses started, but eventually switched to tougher methods, including starting him on a moving treadmill before adding water. Poor kitty. Now she says that Moses sits and waits on the treadmill for the water level to come up before starting. Mm -hmm. He's resigned. He looks determined, actually. Look at look at that little kitty face. He, he has a very determined yeah. look on his face. And that's definitely a orange M head like the Mackie Mouse. Once he has been walking for 13 minutes, I then lift him up, raise the water level further, and swim for a couple of minutes to give him a full body workout. 
Moses is now starting to shape up as well as losing weight, has become far more active and livelier at home. He is already down 2.2 pounds in the vet sees an increase in muscle tissue as well. Yay! Yay! That's a loss in body weight of almost 4% in about six weeks, which is perfect as we don't want to lose the weight too quickly. The important thing is that his body shape is clearly changing as he loses the fat and builds back muscle. I need one of these. <laughs> I'm very proud of Moses' progression. He's even walking with the incline on the treadmill now. How cool. Moses' owner, Jenna Joshi, is thrilled with her pet's progress. I could see a difference almost straight away, she remembers. After his first hydro session, he came through the cat flap, which he hasn't done in a long time. Max is pretty upset that we don't yet have a cat flap. <laughs> We're still having regular weight checks and still doing hydrotherapy and making good progress. It was difficult at first, but now he doesn't complain and knows exactly what he needs to do when he goes for his sessions. The best treatment for overweight animals is to monitor their food intake and don't let them get fat in the first place. <laughs> it can take far more time for a house pet to lose weight and even a semi-determined human being, but fortunately Moses has strong will and a determined human. Aww, good boy, Moses. Good hey, Moses. Keep moseying, Mose. Keep moseying, Mr. Mosey. All right. Well, we kind of slipped over into a little bit more wonderful, so let's talk about taters. Look at all those taters. Look at all them taters. From Canada's province of Manitoba comes the story about dozens of volunteers succeeded when presented with a mammoth logistical challenge, giving away 12 million pounds of potatoes. 12 million pounds. Wow. There are bumper crops, and then there's whatever happened on Isaiah Hofer's Manitoba farm last year. Potatoes were coming out of the ground in such numbers that after fulfilling all his normal deliveries and quotas, Hofner still had 10 million pounds of potatoes left. That's insane. People that have been in this industry for the last 40 years, they've never seen something like this, said Hofer. I don't know if it's Hofer or Hofer. I've been... Uh, I would I'm assume Hofer. Hofer. Hofer? But, okay. Well, wait, because that up here it's Hofner. So it's Hofer, then Hofner. Um... Guys, if you need an editor, I, I could use a job. Yeah, they spell his name wrong. Here it's Hofner, and here okay. it's Hofer. I'm going to start over, <laughs> and we're going to Hofner it up, kids. We're just going to start over. You don't got to start over. Just Hofer. Okay. Hofer. Wait, 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 we got one in the Hofer already. <laughs> ah, ha, 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 ha. All right. People have been thousand listening. bags. My yes. goodness. We had at least almost 100,000 bags of surplus potatoes. In potato language, a bag is 100 pounds or 45 kilos. He had a few options, including leaving them to rot as fertilizer, turning them into animal feed, or selling at a tiny profit or even a loss in such a flush market. In the end, Hofner followed his heart and resolved to give all of them away to the needy. In his email inbox, he saw a letter from the industry group Keystone Potato Producers Association, which happened to be spotlighting the work of a U.S. food charity outfit called FarmLink project. FarmLink arose from the government-enforced business closures and supp supply chain disruptions during the pandemic and was responsible for connecting farms with surplus food with food banks cut off from usual deliveries. Since 2020, they have rescued around 100 millions of million, millions, I say. Millions. They have rescued about 100 million pounds of food from going to waste on farms and distributing it to food banks across North America. Contacting some other farmers he knew, Far Hoffner, wow, Hoffner was soon able to offer, I'm not drinking, folks, offer no, no, farmland. No, I mean, they can see. <laughs> they changed his name every pounds other... um, of potatoes for donation. Teaming up, Hoffner and Kate Nelson, chief marketing officer and co-founder of FarmLink, began to strategize about how to get rid of the spare spuds and food sharing. Ottawa was their first target. CBC News reporting on the story said there's been a dramatic spike in food insecure households in Canada since last year. And Food Sharing Ottawa's volunteer executive director, Wendy Lang, knew that just one of Hofner's 40,000 pound potato donation parcels could make a huge difference. I mean, that can feed multiple families for a while, especially Absolutely. if they, they blanch them and freeze them. Absolutely. Suddenly, the Lang had to swap her typical logistical tools of cardboard boxes, hatchbacks, and shopping carts for a forklift climate-controlled facility, semi-trucks, and a large volunteer workforce if it meant getting hold of the potatoes. Hoffner and Nelson, who were looking at a Canadian $30,000 cost for their donation, were able to rely on some contacts who provided packaging and transportation. Their efforts paid off. Hoffner's farm saw the departure of 115 trucks Man. carrying the spuds to food banks and charities 
as far afield as San Diego, California. Many were sent to the populous province of Ottawa. Together, I think we actually gave back to over 50 local organizations across the city with countless numbers of individuals and households, Ling told CBC. And all these potatoes were claimed actually within eight to nine days. So awesome. all the potatoes survived to be eaten. Yum, yum. In 2020. Now I want news... a big potato. <laughs> well, I, I can't remember. In 2020, GNN reported on a similar volunteer effort to re- rescue 200 tons of potatoes and onions from rot during the pandemic when East West Food Rescue was formed to coordinate the volunteer hauling of the produce from farms in Washington State out to the coastal cities for use in food banks. I bet you my cousin has a hand in some of that as well. So I'll bet she, she does. runs all the I'll food banks does. that had to get started up thanks to the pandemic. Well, that is a lot of potatoes. I love that oh. story. Oh. All right, one last story. This one should hit close to home. A little bit, yeah. Australian doctor Professor Richard Scogier mm-hmm. has announced that he remains cancer-free one year after undergoing a pioneering treatment for glioblastoma. It's the cancer that my mother died of one of the most aggressive and deadly forms of brain cancer. The 57-year-old professor's latest MRI scan confirmed no recurrence of the tumor, making a significant milestone in the fight against GBM. Wow. Does it tell us what the treatment is? Dr. Scolier, renowned for his groundbreaking research on melanoma, was diagnosed with a partially aggressive subtype of GBM in June last year following a seizure while in Poland. GBM typically has a dire prognosis with most patients surviving less than a year. My mom survived a year to the day longer than they said she would. However, Scolier's experience has defied these odds, offering new hope to patients worldwide. And yes, it will explain momentarily what the procedure was. Okay. Sharing his joy on social media, Scolier tweeted, I had brain MRI scan last Thursday looking for a recurrent of glioblastoma and or treatment complications. I found out yesterday that there's no sign of recurrence. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. Scolier's treatment was a world first involving pre-surgery combination immune immunotherapy, leveraging his extensive knowledge and research on melanoma, he applied this innovative approach to his own condition. This novel treatment strategy aimed to activate the immune system, hello, to fight the cancer more effectively. Yeah, because what they do is they kill the immune system Uh with all the poisons and then wonder why people die of the treatment. Yeah. We've shown that you can activate the immune system and it will do very well. This is now a foundational first step to change the field, the way drugs are explored in brain cancer. Oh my God. Isn't why, that wonderful? Why have we been nuking people and poisoning people all this time? Uh, I, can, I can sum it up in two words. Cha and Ching. Yeah. There. I, th- I, think I, I think I took care of that. I think my mom was on the right path. And I think she got tired and gave up. Yeah, well, I mean... And the minute she did, they started nuking her again. And then she was gone. Yeah. Wow, that is... Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to keep track of this guy and... uh, Definitely, I want to... Find out more about him, for sure. Alrighty, folks. Well, we're going to head into the news of the wicked. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right Right back. back. Hey kids, it's time for the new breakfast cereal that will have you dancing. Introducing Twerkies, the naturally sweetened multigrain cereal that will have your taste buds bumping and grinding like they were on Netflix. Twerkies are high in protein and fortified with essential vitamins and minerals that will power you up to shake that ass like an extra in a Cardi B video. Plus, Twerkies has more fiber than the leading children's cereals, which will keep that preteen bot of yours ready for that painted-on Vegas showgirl outfit. Each crunchy bowl of Twerkies will have you humping the floor and begging for more. Get your find behind your local store and pick up a box of Twerkies today. Twerkies, one of the fine cereals from Quake and O's.
Uh, now, see, that's why we can't have nice things. We are ready to go. This is beautiful. Mo money, mo problems. Mo money, mo problems. A main man. Not my main man, but not a man from the state of Maine. Not my main man. <laughs> my main man, who won one of the biggest lottery jackpots in American history, has been accused of stiffing his family for their promised share of the loot, including backpedaling on setting up a million-dollar trust fund and covering medical expenses for his father. What a jerk. Don't know. The unidentified man who bought the winning ticket in Lebanon, Maine, on January 13th last year before striking it rich with the 1.35 billion, with a B, Wait, Mega but, Millions but, jackpot. And he couldn't share? We'll see. Has with been his an illegal. Daughter's mom. Okay. Yeah, see? I You're see jumping that. to conclusions saying he's a bad guy. Yeah. All right? Yeah. That's why I just kept rolling. Has been an illegal battle with his daughter's mom since November when he accused her of violating a non disclosure agreement by telling the rest of the family about his newfound fortune before their daughter's 18th birthday in 2032, according to The Independent. So did they have like a legal binding agreement saying you can't tell nobody until she turns 18? And why? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay. But in new court filings, the mom, identified by a pseudonym, Sarah Smith, hmm, claims he was the <laughs> one who spilled the beans about the historic win to his family, not her. The lucky man's father buttressed Smith's claims saying his son told him about his victory before rattling off all the things he planned to do with the spoils, which the outlet said he collected through an LLC in a lump sum north of $500 million. February or March of 2023, my son came to my house and informed me and my wife that he won a large amount of money in the main state lottery, his father wrote in the court documents, according to the outlet. I understand that my son has stated he told me nothing about his money other than the simple fact that I had won, the dad wrote. That is not true. The father claims he didn't ask for any money, but that didn't stop the newly minted half-billionaire from allegedly making a litany of unsolicited high-dollar promises, including building his dad a garage to fix up old cars, buying his child at home, setting up a million-dollar trust fund, and funding future medical expenses for his dad and stepmom. His son also allegedly demanded he not speak to Smith, his granddaughter's mother, ever again, which created a rift between the two, the Independent okay, said. Okay, I'm, I'm confused. I must have gotten lost somewhere along the way. Yeah. Who won? Was it the dad or the son? The son. Okay, so the... But son, stopped the son demanded from... that his dad stop speaking to the granddaughter. Well, I'm confused because it says the... that didn't stop the newly minted half-billionaire from allegedly making a lit litany of unsolicited high-dollar pro oh, promises. So he, he promised his dad that he was going to build his garage... Supposedly. Buy the home. Supposedly. Set up a trial. Okay, so he promised his dad he would do all this stuff. Okay. Well, his dad says he promised him he'd do all this stuff. As long as he doesn't speak to the ex. Right. Okay. His son also allegedly demanded he not speak to Smith, his granddaughter's mother, ever again, which created a rift between the two, the independents said. I told him, you are not the son I knew, his dad wrote in the filing. See, he got I, angry. I think the reason I'm having problems is because they're taking the subject, mm -hmm. his son... And then making him, they're cross-pollinating the subject of the sentence. It's like you got to right, pick right. and stick. Yeah, well. <laughs> he got angry, calling me a dictator and an a-hole. I have not heard from my son since, and he has not done any of the things he promised. Wait, so how was he a dick? Never mind. <sighs> okay. His son described it differently in his own filings. I made the mistake of telling my father that I had won the lottery without having him sign a confidentiality agreement, the lotto winner wrote. Our it's relationship his money. He's the, the, nobody has any legal claim to his money. Bingo. Our relationship deteriorated quickly thereafter he continued. I did not tell him what I was doing with my money, how I was going to benefit my daughter, or any facts other than the simple fact that I had won. He also accused his baby mama of trying to reveal his identity to the world and said she accused him of trying to kidnap their daughter after he wouldn't pay for a vacation for her and her boyfriend. Okay, I'm curious to see what the uh, comments are. He owes his family nothing is what the first yeah. person says, and I kind of agree. Baby mama wanted this guy to pay for a vacation for her new boyfriend. Yeah. If you want to Losers. Be <laughs> and don't help out your family, then you deserve every bad thing to happen to you. Depends. Well, if your your family, I mean, if jerks. your family's a bunch of jerks, if your family are a bunch of money grubbing dum dums, I'm being nice. 
I'm using good language. Yeah. Um, then yeah, they don't deserve it. I mean, I would, I would keep it a major secret, but you know, if I find out that a friend of mine is in dire straits, all of a sudden they'd see a check coming in the mail or something wow. or the, whatever. The, the uh, conversation immediately degenerated into voting for Biden or Trump. So <laughs> of course, yeah, it you did. can't get away from it. You think I'm bad? <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, you are, but you know, I, it's I, it's I, I, I are bad. I are bad. <laughs> I are I are a bad moon big star of cartoon. Anyway, I, I are bad. You see, watchy watchy. Okay. <laughs> and now back to my old stomping okay. grounds of California. This one, um, I haven't read this one yet, so all of this I'm one is cold on this pretty one. awful. Okay. Yee. All right. Within hours after Thomas Perez Jr. called police to report his father missing. He found himself in a tiny interrogation room confronted by Fontana detectives determined to extract a confession that he killed his dad. That took an evil Knievel leap. It took a gigantic leap. Wow. Perez <laughs> told police that his father, 71-year-old Thomas Perez Sr., went out for a walk with the family dog at about 10 p.m. on August 7th, 2018. The dog returned within minutes without Perez's father. Investigators didn't believe his story, and over the next 17 hours, they grilled him to try to get to the truth. And so over the, the next truth being in, uh, in Cody, Cody, Cody Marks. Well, they can see that. Uh, question. Oh, that's right. Over the next 17 hours, they grilled the poor man, but didn't try looking for the dad? Were they so busy? In, okay, keep keep going, because right. it gets worse. According to the court records, detectives told Perez that his father was dead... Oh, and that they had recovered his body and now wore a toe tag at the morgue. They said they had evidence that Perez killed his father and that he should just admit it. Records show. This poor man is being tortured. At least they let him have the dog. Perez insisted he didn't remember killing anyone. I don't recall killing anyone. I mean, it's possible. I kill people all the time. I just don't remember it this time. What a weird way to answer that. But detectives allegedly told him that the human mind often tries to suppress troubling memories. Okay. At one point during the interrogation, the investigators even threatened to have his pet Labrador retriever, Margosha, euthanized as a stray. Okay, first of all, it is not euthanasia if it's a perfectly healthy animal. And what kind of crazy... They brought the... Do okay, I just said, at least I let him have the puppy. I did not know the context. They brought the dog into the room so he could say goodbye. Okay, your dog's now gone. Forget about it, said an investor. Please tell me the dog's okay. Please tell me the dog's okay. And these mother don't want to... He didn't hurt the dog. This poor man. Why? Why would they do this? How can you sit there? How can you sit there and say you don't know what happened and your dog is sitting there looking at you knowing you killed your dad? Look at your dog. She knows because she was walking through all the blood. Finally, after curling up with the dog on the floor, Perez broke down and confessed. He said he had stabbed his father multiple times with a pair of scissors during an altercation in which his father hit Perez over the head with a beer bottle. He was so distraught that he even tried to hang himself with the drawstring from his shorts after being left alone in the interrogation room. Perez was arrested, handcuffed, and transported to a mental hospital for 72-hour observation. But later that, de that same day, the truth derailed the detective's theory and their prized confession. Oh, my Lord. I'm just, I mean, I'm glad the man's Perez's alive. Perez's father wasn't dead or even missing. Thomas Sr. was at the Los Angeles International Airport waiting for a flight to see his daughter in North California. But police didn't immediately tell Perez? That was actually a... a that ended with a period, folks. Well, why? <laughs> what, so there was no blood, no body. Why? Why would they do this to him? Mentally torturing a false confession out of Tom Perez, concealing from him that his father was alive and well, and confining him in the psych ward because they made him suicidal. In my 40 years of suing the police, I have never seen that level of deliberate cruelty. 
said Jerry Steering, Perez's attorney. Oh, I hope. Oh, 900,000. And in this case, it's like maybe just about enough. God, I hope the dog's okay. Steering filed a civil rights lawsuit in federal court against the city of Fontana, alleging that police psychologically tortured Perez and coerced a false confession. Now I don't believe any confessions ever. Right. Without first determining that the father had actually been killed. Yeah, hello. <laughs> the suit was recently settled for nearly $900,000, and he deserves every damn penny, and it should be tax-free. Fontana police did not return an email seeking comment, you think? This is the worst part. Three of the involved officers remain employed at the department and the other has retired, probably with full pension. Probably. So how could this happen? In court documents and depositions, police say they had reason to believe Perez was lying. Uh, did that reason include blood or a body? Because, um, there wasn't either. <laughs> First, they noticed he seemed distracted and unconcerned during the 911 call, according to court records. Yeah, because there was no blood or body. Officers responding to the call noted the father's cell phone and wallet were still at the home, which is in disarray. Police saw... Oh, how, why was his phone in... If he's at the airport, why... Okay. Police saw the mess as a sign of a struggle, but Steering said Perez was renovating the house and had argued with his father about it. But still no blood or body. Additionally, a police dog sniffed out the scent of a corpse in the father's bedroom, and there were small blood stains in the house. Well, at least we... What happened to the dog was walking through all the, the rivers of blood. I don't know. Steering later would say the blood stains were caused by the father's... Finger prick diabetes tests. Look at this poor man. I mean, they are literally torturing him. Perez's lawsuit claims detectives also refused for several hours to retrieve his medication for high blood pressure, asthma, depression, and stress. So they literally tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they literally tried to kill this man, and he did nothing wrong. Perez became so distraught that he began pulling out his hair, hitting himself, making anguish noises, and tearing off his shirt while police encouraged him to confess, according to summary. Yeah, because he probably thought he was insane. He probably thought he was going absolutely insane because he didn't know what they were talking about. <clears throat> oh, by the way, no body, no blood. He was sleep deprived, mentally ill, and significantly undergoing symptoms of withdrawal from his psychiatric medications. This is never good news when that happens. This is beyond cruel. This is, I can't, I can't wrap my mind around this. At one point during the interrogation, investigators drove Perez... The $900,000 should come out of these men's pensions. They should have to pay this themselves. It would be nice. Why, why are we, the taxpayers, on the hook for this? Th these men should have to pay it themselves. And they should be jailed. They should be in jail. They sure, they sure as heck should not be still employed by the city of Fontana. Anyway... At one point during the interrogation, investigators drove Perez to get coffee and then to some housing tracks where he had been looking to buy. Detectives berated Perez, insisting he did not need his medication and that they knew he killed his father, according to the case summary. When can you take us to show us where Daddy is? asked one of the investigators. Later, during their interview, the detectives told Perez his father's body actually had been found already. Oh, unfortunately, it was alive and breathing. Alive and breathing at the airport. <laughs> asked in a deposition about his line of questioning, one of the detectives said, I believe at the time... I, I want the names of these dipsticks. This sounds like a horror movie. This, this is like... This doesn't sound like it's real. I believed at the time if we told him that we had located the body, then maybe he would give us more information about what had occurred. Uh, he went to the airport, jackholes. Police and court records insisted Perez was voluntarily undergoing questioning. Doesn't sound like it to me. And was free to go at any time. Uh-huh. However, in her case summary, Guy wrote that the circumstances suggested to Perez that he was not free to leave. Yeah, what do you bet would have happened if he just got up and walked out of there? <laughs> she also noticed, uh, noted that there was no legitimate government interest that would justify treating Perez in this manner while he was still in medical distress. 
Perez's nightmare ended shortly after police got a phone call from his sister who said their father was alive and well. He had actually walked to the train station in Fontana and rode the line to the Los Angeles County to visit, relative, visit a relative and then took a bus to visit a female friend, Steering said. Perez Sr. later went to the airport to await a flight to Oakland to visit his daughter. Without his wallet? Don't you Doesn't of, sound like he's all there. Don't, don't you kind of need ID, though, to get on an airplane? I, I would imagine. Um, well, yeah. Police picked up the father at the airport and brought him to the Fontana station. But the investigation didn't stop there. Of course it didn't. Uh, what? Detectives obtained a warrant to again search Perez's house for evidence that he had assaulted and They must have had it out victim. for this guy. Did he have some, some kind of record from before? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of, or maybe he ran over one of their kids or something. I mean, I can't imagine having this much hatred for somebody. Uh, Perez was not released until after the end of the three-day psychological observation period. He then retrieved his dog, thank God, from Riverside County Animal Services, tracking her down to an implanted ship. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that that dog was okay, because if the dog ended up dying, that I, I'd be driving down to these guys. Mm -hmm. While Guy concluded Fontana detectives had sufficient reason to believe an offense had been co committed, what what offense? What? what? Who's this Guy person? I don't know. Let's see. She criticized officers for the district court judge. Yeah, Guy, you're an idiot. You're a moron. Don't tell me you're a Soros hire. He did. They did not have sufficient reason to believe an offense had been committed. They had zero reasons. They had. Nothing. Well, the, the sentence, woman. A reasonable juror could <laughs> conclude that the detectives inflicted unconstitutional psychological tor torture on Perez, Guy wrote in her summary judgment. Their tactics indisputably led to Perez's subjective confusion and disorientation to the point that he falsely confessed to killing his father and tried to take his own life. And so we don't know why, why these cops still have jobs. Wh we, we how don't... do these men have jobs? I mean, look at this poor man. No, the, 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 the retired one needs to have his pension removed, put him back on the streets looking for work, because that, that's stupid. And to, the other... To threaten his dog. You do not get lower than that. You, there is, they could not have stooped, if they were snakes crawling underground, they could not have stooped lower than that. And that's why we can't have nice things. And that's not a Labrador, by the way. That's a border collie. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm completely at a loss on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one looks interesting. I think somebody might be in a little bit of trouble. Just a bit. The Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum is once again under the spotlight after a manager failed to consult a collections committee before purchasing a 21-star flag whose description as a rare banner marking Illinois' 1818 admission to the Union is disputed. The flag's acquisition through an online auction for more than $15,000... How does this dude get to spend $15,000 How do you get to spend $15,000 Without any, uh, without any okay from anybody. Wow. That is one heck of a credit card limit, dude. Precipitated an investigation by Illinois' Office of the Executive Inspector General about money used for the purchase. The purchase also led to division in the Springfield Museum's leadership and may have prompted the firing of an employee who said the acquisition skirted procedures. Wait, why would the person who said that it skirted the procedures get fired? Let's find out! That, I have no idea. That sounds like retribution to me. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. The flag, measuring 7 foot 5 by 6 foot 5, is known as a grand luminary because its 21 stars are arranged in the shape of a star, which is a really cool design. It is. Um, the museum is confident it represo represents Illinois' admission as the 21st state, spokesperson Christopher Wills said. Such flags are rare because the design was changed a year later when Aladang, Bama, and Maine joined the Union. But Jeff Bridgman, a respected vexillologist or flag expert, told the Associated Press... Its construction and materials indicate the flag was produced decades later during the Civil War and is perhaps a Southern exclusionary flag whose stars represent states that remained loyal to the Union. Oh, so he way overpaid. Mm, Bridgman, who stocks roughly 3,000 mostly, uh, 
mostly 19th century flags, said it is not from 1818. Whoopsie doodle. If it was, he said, I would have been after it at the auction. This is not the first possible blow to the museum's credibility. Its prized purchase of a purported Lincoln stovepipe hat appraised at $6.5 million went sour when evidence linking it to the 16th president was questioned. A director was fired in 2019 for sending, without approval, a copy of the Gettysburg Address written in Lincoln's hand to a Texas exhibit operated by conservative political commentator Glenn Beck. Wait, they just... Oh, here's the Gettysburg Address written by... It just... Yeah. U.S. Post? Really? Uh, the museum's acquisitions chief, Ian Hunt, submitted a request to the executive director to pursue the 21-star flag on November 6th, according to documents provided to the AP under an open records request. So he did submit a request. <clears throat> yes, he did. The flag had been part of the prestigious Zara Corps flag collection. Hunt won the auction on November 13th, and the museum paid $15,625 for the flag using the King Hostick Trust Fund, an endowment to finance state historic research and artifact acquisition. Well, it sounds like they're not going to be trusting much more. Yep. Not much trust in that trust fund no more. <laughs> Museum policy dictates that purchases exceeding $2,000 be proposed for advanced consideration by a collections committee composed of department heads. Well, hello. The panel hadn't met regularly because of a staff vacancy, but it convened to consider the flag on December 7th, three weeks after its purchase, and voted 7-2 to two in favor. So, yeah, we already did it, so let's go ahead and vote for it. Kind of late now, guys. Yeesh. Then Registrar Eldon Yakel and Research Director Brian Mitchell voted no. Mitchell declined to comment to the AP. Staff comments at the bottom of the document recording the vote include concerns about the flag's authenticity and storage. The committee vote would have been closer had the acquisition not been a done deal, Yakel said. Well, duh. Well, duh. Museum fired Yakel May 6, citing his poor performance and rules violations, but he blamed his no vote. Mm hmm. Huh? Wills declined comment. Yakel said he told investigators with the Executive Inspector General that the flag purchase improperly sidestepped committee concurrence. They asked him if he knew of fraud or abuse in the transaction and whether King Hostick funds were tapped. He told him he didn't know of any fraud or abuse or the details concerning Hostick money or its intended use. Two museum employees, one current and one former, told the AP that their complaints to the inspector prompted the investigation. They requested anonymity for fear of retribution. Well, yeah, since they already fired <clears throat> the poor dude who said something before. Yeah. Neil Olson, general counsel for, for that thing. Neil Olson, general counsel for the inspector general, declined comment on the probe. The office has not received really... Wow, dude. Let's try again. The office has not released any findings. In cases of wrongdoing, the Inspector General's office can recommend corrective remedies, including discipline or dismissal. The inspector may also conduct a criminal investigation or refer a probe to the appropriate law enforcement agency. This goes on for a little bit of a time. Will said the museum has not been made aware of any complaints to the Inspector General, but was clearly allowed to use hostage money for the flag. He conceded a misstep by Hunt for proceeding without committee recon or. Committee consideration, but noted museum policy only requires the committee's recommendation on pricey purchases. Ay, ay, ay. After the late Ben Zarakor purchased the flag in 1995, he had renowned vexillologist, that's the first time I've ever used that word was today, Howard Mattias. Well, now you get to use uh, it more than once. Mattias determined the flag was made Mattias entirely. Mattias, Flagius. Yeah. It sounds like the beginning of a roadrunner. <laughs> yeah, I know. Matt, Mattos determined the flag was made entirely of cotton in 1818 to 20. Bridgman considered Mattias, who died in 2007, a respected colleague and friend, but he said Mattos got this one wrong. While he hasn't examined the flag personally, Bridgman said high-resolution images so show the blue canton is wool or a wool blend typical of Civil War-era flags. It is worn in long, narrow holes. Cotton doesn't do that. Wool absolutely does, Bridgman said. A 2003 report by respected conservator Fonda Thompson determined at least part of the flag is made of wool, but the flag was not examined sufficiently to draw any conclusions. Museum officials have not yet inspected the flag, which was delivered to a conservation company for stabilization 
Stabilization? Yeah, stabilization. Stabilization and, is when you poke it a lot. Okay. Probably did that too. <laughs> and cleaning to ensure its longevity. The estimated cost of conservation. I mean, it's, it's still a, a beautiful relic. Oh, it is. It it's is. just not what he right. thought it was. Well, the estimated cost of conservation is $18,000. That's a lot of money for a piece of cloth. The AP asked another vexillologist to examine photos of the flag and judge its age. Only one responded. Dave Martucci of Washington, Maine, which one is it? Said via mail that he's familiar with the flag and believes the design, construction, and size point towards 1818, not 1861. Regardless of its history, Will said the flag has a solid pedigree, like you said, and was a sound investment. We're always open to learning more about it, Will said, and if it turns out that it's from a different era with a different story, that's the way it goes. We'll tell that story. And it just so happens that that story is a good one, too. Right. But ultimately, this dude went off the rails, spent a whole bunch of money without getting permission. Yeah. And I wish I had 15 off. grand. I could just blow on whatever. On an old piece of cloth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. This next one. This one upsets a little, you. a little offbeat for yeah. us because we've, we've had discussions about uh, drag shows and mm -hmm. I've made my wishes or my, my concerns very clear, but this one ticks me off, and for reasons I think that it will surprise you. Okay. So this man was at, uh, well, let's just read it. Uh, Adjurdia has awarded more than $1.1 million to an Idaho drag performer who accused a far-right blogger of defaming him when she falsely claimed that he exposed himself to a crowd, including children, during a Pride event in June 2022. Now, before I put this on our list, I actually tracked down her video Mm -hmm. She is a hateful, spiteful, awful person, and she is what all liberals think that non-liberals are. Yeah. And unfortunately, she's kind of the poster child for basically awful people. She lied. She made this up. And here, here's where I stand on this. There is enough evil, awful nastiness in the world. We don't need to make it up. That's very and true. It's something that I noticed at the end, and I, I might look at some of these. A lot of the comments at the end of this article are from right wingers, mm -hmm. and they're all calling her out, saying this was not cool. What she did was not right, and we're glad that this guy won his case. But all the lefties are saying, "See, we told you that they're just Nazis and evil and vile and nasty and will lie all the time and this and that." And it's like okay. You guys will double, triple, quadruple down on a lie. Find people. Drink bleach. Mm -hmm. Smirked at a Native American. You know, cross state lines with his, his gun. I mean, the list goes on and on. Overfed koi fish. Russia collusion. I mean, I, I could just sit here and just name sure. all these hoaxes. Sure. These absolutely fabricated nonsense that they will triple dog down on. Even in the face of being proven... False, and they'll and and then of course they'll always throw in the insults and just absolute horrific vile name calling, you know, sweeten it, sweeten it up. Whereas those of us who see something like this, I'm glad this guy won his case. Well, let's hear he more about defamed. it. All right, the I don't want to say this. Kutunai County Kootenai. District. Kutunai. Kutunai. A uh, county district court jury, and, and sadly, this happened in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where I love, I love Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, county district court jury unanimously found Friday that Summer Bushnell defamed Post Falls resident Eric Posey when she posted a doctored video of his performance with a blurred spot that she claimed covered his, quote, fully exposed genitals, oh my the Coeur d'Alene Press reported. I mean, what a, don't, don't lie. Just don't. And that's the thing. We hate liars. Anybody right of Chairman Mao despises liars, but they relish in it. And, and then when they can find a liar on our side, they're like, see, they're all like that. It's like, no, no, we don't like her either. In reality, the unedited video showed no indecent exposure and prosecutors declined to file charges. The judicial system did what they needed, what needed to be done, Posey said after the verdict. Jurors awarded Posey, wow, $926,000. Okay, now how come he gets more than the guy who was tortured 
and had his dog threatened and ended up trying to commit suicide. I think we're going a little bit overboard here in compensatory damages for defamation because Posey proved, I mean, I think it's a little bit more defaming to say you stabbed your father to death and oh, by the way, he's alive and waiting, waiting for you at the airport. <laughs> so I don't think this is a very fair compensation. Well, I mean, it's, it's, real, it's all relative. <sighs> No, it's not. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm saying. No, but what I'm, saying, what, what I'm saying is it just depends on the circumstances and, and the jurisdiction. Mm. It just depends on where you are, basically. I think, I think, I think dude deserved a lot more. Mm. And all, every single cop in that story. Yeah, the I'm cop still, should I'm be gone. I'm still mad about, I'm still mad about that story. Mm. Because Posey proved that Bushnell knew her allegations were false when she made them, or that she made the accusations with reckless disregard for the truth. The jury awarded $250,000 in additional punitive damages. So this dude, basically over a million dollars. Posey, who uses the stage name Mona Liza Million, performed three times at the Pride in the Park celebration, wearing a long sleeve leotard, black shorts, and tights with a shiny metallic boa around his waist. He did not remove clothing. And like I said, I looked up the video both the doctored version and the original version. He did not undress. He did not expose any part of his junk. The Pride event made national news at the time, and then they go off onto the Patriot front, which, by the way, is just an FBI thing. It's not even real. Um, but seriously, how can you get arrested for conspiracy to riot? You... you can you really get arrested for them thinking you might do something? I don't think that's a thing. This isn't Minority Report, and Patriot Friend isn't even real. So um, so what she goes on, she's all upset about the Patriot Front thing, which means she's so stupid she thinks they're real. Why did no one arrest the man in a dress who flashed his genitalia? First of all, he wasn't wearing a dress. He was wearing shorts. Two minors and people in the crowd. She said, no one said anything about it. And there's video. I'm going to put up the blurred video to prove it. Well, if you had to blur it, honey. <laughs> the next day, Bushnell published the edited version of the video, which she obtained from a local videographer. It garnered... A videographer? Videographer. Okay. I like videographer. I know. <laughs> videographer. You said it that way. Yeah, that's why I said it that way. It garnered many thousands of views, sparking national news coverage and a police investigation. I think that's where she made her big mistake. Yeah. She suggested he had committed a felony and urged people to call police and have him arrested. I don't know, because most pride parades have guys swinging their junk all over the dang place and nobody says anything. Bushnell was expressionless as she hurried out of the courtroom on Friday. Yeah, because the problem is they can award him a million bucks, but if she ain't got it, he ain't seeing it. Her attorney told jurors that his client's allegations were close to the line, but not defamatory. B.S. She lied. She made up. She doctored the video. She lied. He maintained that Bushnell's honest belief was that Posey exposed... No. She, no. She doctored that video. Though she admitted on the witness stand that she never saw the, quote, fully exposed genitals she described to others. Well, then who doctored the video? After hearing the verdict, Posey burst into tears and embraced his lawyers and friends. Yeah, he did not deserve what she did to him. The jury's verdict demonstrates a clear message to this community that you have to be truthful. Duh. I mean, like I said, there's enough guys out there spanking each other and flashing whatever and diddling kids and all that. We don't need to make it up on some poor innocent guy that could have his entire life ruined and he didn't do anything wrong. I don't have a problem with drag. I just have a problem with drag involving children. Right, The exactly. two do not go together. No. Children do not belong in strip clubs. They do not belong at, at drag shows. Right. They are adult entertainment. I mm -hmm. don't want children watching porn. I don't want children reading about porn. I don't want children sexualized at all. Let children be children, for God's sake. This guy didn't do anything wrong. Right. Um, false rhetoric, drag queens, blah, blah. Well, they're all going to die, and I'm not going to read the Rainbow People BS. Um, he's been helped and supported from his friends. Imagine being in a dark hole where you have nobody and you felt the whole world turn their back on you, he said. But somehow you were surrounded by warriors, true people of Idaho, not transplants, not people of this soil. True people of this soil. I'm sorry, true people of this soil. Very important. I'm very fortunate to say I have people like that around me, people that lifted me up. Now, people... In Idaho, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, mm -hmm. predominantly white Christians. Right. This was a black drag queen, mm -hmm. and he had support. 
I'm telling you, good people will surround you if you are a good person. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who you voted for. It doesn't matter who you pray to. If you're, I mean, it kind of does a little bit, but if you're a good person, people will, will lift you up. The jury deliberated for about three and a half hours. I'm surprised they deliberated that long. After a five-day trial, before returning the verdict, jurors asked the court if they could direct Bushnell to take down her post. What? Her posts were still up? Are you kidding me? Um, and publicly apologize. First judge, first district judge Ross Pittman, who I just got a little shrill there, sorry, yeah, who presided did. over the trial indicated... But there, they there's some could? birds that are on the branch that are looking at you. Yeah, say, they're looking at me like, huh? <laughs> Hi. Um, <laughs> they could not do so. So they won the case. Dude was defamed. Well, because... And the posts are still up? How do you not... See, now I'm even angrier. Following the verdict, jurors approached Posey outside the courthouse to shake his hand or hug him. I'm so sorry you went through this. I, it just, folks, like I said, there is enough badness in There's the world. There's enough true evil that we, don't, we can we don't talk about. We don't need about. to make it up, and we don't need innocent people to be taken down. Because what happens is you invalidate. It, it's like crying wolf. You invalidate when it is happening. And then they can just point to you and say, oh, I remember when you lied about this and that, which I don't understand why. MSNPC and CNN, you know, aren't are aren't getting that treatment since they've lied so often. I don't understand why people even consider them news sources anymore. But if we start doing this, it, it, you know, if if you start taking down people who are just caught in the crossfire, you're not going to make it better. You're going to make it worse. Nobody's going to trust anybody because we already have vitriolic, just cruel, nasty people out there calling us names that aren't true. Right. And they always throw in some racism and, you know, they always have to be, you know, perverted and, and twisted. You know, we've already got that going on naturally. We don't need to create it. Don't create a problem when it's not there. Point out where it is. There's, there's plenty of pedos to go around. This guy did not deserve to be taken down. He did nothing wrong. I mean, it, not my form of entertainment, and frankly, he wasn't a believable drag queen, and he wasn't even really good at what he did, but he didn't deserve to be taken down. So mm -hmm. that's my piece on that. <sighs> this is why we can't have nice things, Jim. Very much so. Ever had a day you felt so stupid, lacking a brain? Well, here's a guy who'll make you feel like a genius and maybe even sane. All oh, the world loves to laugh at losers as often as they can. Here comes another chance to chuckle. Here comes the Florida man. Hey, it's been a long time since we've done some Florida Man, and boy, do we have some doozies for youzies. We doozies. <laughs> Here we gozies. Did All you, right. let's, you want to start? Yeah, why don't I? And this particular Florida Man story, the guy just happens to live in Florida. This is not anything this he did wrong. This is actually sad. This is a sad story. Yeah. I'm I'm a little miffed because this this is this is the guy that the liberals always bring up and yeah we'll see but I mean he's, yeah. he's an anomaly yeah I'm on his side fortunately I hope hopefully they get this fixed because this is ridiculous all right off you go a Florida resident discovered he wasn't an American citizen despite living in the United States for over sixty years after his application to receive Social Security benefits was rejected. Jimmy Class, 66, told local news channel News 6 Click Orlando that he received a letter from the Social Security Administration in 2020 saying he hadn't proven he had U.S. citizenship. I had to go through the same thing to get my driver's license I here know, in that, Texas. That was a funny story. <laughs> According to his birth certificate, his mother was a Canadian citizen. Who's Those darn Canadians, how uh, dare them yeah, surge our border. Yeah, 
whose paternal grandparents came from Germany. His father was a natural-born U.S. citizen. Class, who was brought to the U.S. when he was only two years old, believed that he had been granted U.S. citizenship through his father. Well, yeah, if his father was a U.S. citizen, isn't he automatically? Mm, depends on where you're born. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, we'll look that up later, but I, I guess... I have friends who were born overseas to military parents, and they are considered American ah, citizens. Ah, that's different, though. How? If you are on a military base, I know this because I was a jarhead. Oh, it's um, like, I, I'm, if touching you it, on, I'm touching it, I'm touching if you, it, I'm touching it, I'm touching it. Yeah, you are on, if you are born on a on U.S. property, and that includes military bases overseas then you are still an American citizen. Yeah. If you're some schmo just born in Canada but happen to have an American dad, that doesn't mean anything. Huh. All right. Hey. Yeah. No, I, I, I disagree. All right. Off you well, go. it doesn't matter if you disagree. Well, I'm an American. I mean, you can disagree about, I'm you know. I'm an American, and I want him to have his Social Security as much as I want me to have my Social Security because I know it's not going to be there by the time I'm old enough to Everybody that. says that. Anyway. Well, everybody my age, yeah, because it's true. <laughs> my dad's roots were in Brooklyn, New York, and two years into my existence, they decided to load up the truck and move to Beverly, so to speak. <laughs> Class told the news channel. We moved to Tennessee Avenue in Long Island to be more specific. I'm sorry, Long Island. Line. To be more specific. And we moved into the house next to my grandparents. Class has lived in the U.S. ever since. He reportedly received a Social Security card, a driving license, and a voter registration card... But he wasn't but a citizen. But if he has a social security card, how did he get it if he's you can not get, a citizen? You can get a social security card and not be a citizen. You well, How? There, there's If you are legally living in the United States, you can get a social security card for work purposes only. It's very rare, but, but they do have them. But then what's the point of it if you can't cash out on the social security that you pay into it? That's literally the entire point of having a social yeah, security number. I know. There's no I other. Know. Well, they said it wasn't going to become a universal ID, but they lied because they lie about everything. Right. Any hoops. Newsweek reached out to class for comment via email on Wednesday morning. I have a, I was accepted everything. Photo ID card. I voted here. You know, I acted like a regular citizen. Class said never, ever, ever came about where I was here. Where I was here illegally. Even the social security says I didn't prove it to them. They gave me my Medicare for over a year and a half. Ooh. For decades, he voted in federal elections, potentially breaking the law if his U.S. citizenship was not confirmed. The 66-year-old said he has since contacted the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services to confirm his citizenship, but he was denied. He was denied? According to the current law, for foreigners, I mean foreign-born individuals, can obtain citizenship through the U.S. citizen parent at birth or after birth as long as this happens before the age of 18. But what if they didn't know? Yeah, yeah. Under the Child Citizenship Act of 2000, children who are born outside the U.S. but now live in the U.S. can acquire citizenship under Section 320 of the Immigration and Nationality Act. Sounds a more child... like Section 420, if you ask me. Far out. A child born outside the country automatically becomes a U.S. citizen when the child has at least one parent, including an adoptive parent, who is a U.S. citizen by birth or through naturalization. Yes. The child is under 18 years of age. The yes. child is a lawful permanent resident. Yes. And the child residing in the U.S. United States is the legal and physical custody of the U.S. citizen parent. Those all apply to him. These rules wouldn't have applied at the time class moved into the U.S. This Why? all happened afterwards. Oh, oh, they put those laws into place. They put those laws afterwards. <gasps> so, well, yeah. what was in place then? Not a whole lot, it would appear. Okay, but the laws are there now. They don't allow for you grandfathering. You can't retroactively say, oh, you, 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 according to laws that are, don't even exist anymore, we're going to retroactively you know, revoke your... No, that's BS. Max is, up, Max? Max is upset. Max is mad too. I must admit I am absolutely perplexed by this absolutely insane abuse of our legal rights. You're a citizen, Max. Max is a citizen. You don't have to worry about it, bud. Another big issue for Klaus right now, besides potentially facing federal charges, is that he's unable to receive all the money he's put into Social Security over the years. He has created a GoFundMe page to help cover his expenses. The reason I'm starting to GoFundMe is that the United States government does not pay me my Social Security that I paid in for my entire life, as they indicate that I am not here legally, even though I've been here for 64 years. My dad was an American-born citizen. My mom was a Canadian-born citizen. And the fight with having to hire attorneys and genealogists and retrieving documents for 
USCIS. He he's wrote. got a 23 and me to prove he's like what? Human? I don't know. I don't know. This is ridiculous. My case is now in the hands of the media. As I'm getting older and not collecting what I am doing, it is becoming a financial burden. And before I lose my home, I am looking for charitable assistance. This Any help guy. would be greatly appreciated. Dudes, former employers, do the right thing, dude. What? Do the right thing. Just what? do the right thing. Oh, front, you're talking to social security. Yeah. <laughs> former employers. Ah. So, yeah. yeah. Max is a little upset because it, it's booming and popping and thundering and lightning. And oh, yeah. He's he does not happy. Not like that. He does not like bad weather. You hear a crying boy. That's what that's about. He's, you want to say something into the mic, Max? I most certainly do. <laughs> so say it, Max. He said all he had to say. All right. The man has social security. Now we're going to get back to more traditional Florida man, Florida man stories. <sighs> A Florida man who aspired to become a police officer admitted to, oh Lordy, admitted to sexually <laughs> abusing his cousin during a police department job interview and thankfully now faces life in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Bowling. I don't find the rape funny. I just... I, no, I just the rape, so you, no, no, this uh, poor child. Stephen Boldly, middle name Idiot, 26, gosh, she was young too, was convicted by an Orange County jury last week of sexual battery on a child. The Office of State Attorney Andrew Bain said in a news release, Bodley first mentioned playing sexual games in a sworn officer, my God, in a sworn officer application with the Are you stupid? The police department. He again mentioned the crime during an interview. Yeah, you know, I robbed a bank, I diddled a kid, I'm gonna make a great cop. You know what? You could be president. The best, the best. How are your sniffing skills? Who better to bust criminals than somebody who knows than about being a criminal? Who is a criminal. Yeah, you well, there, there you yeah. go. I guess. The certified voice stress analysis examiner performed a voice stress examination on Boldly. It doesn't sound like he even needed it. I think that's like a. I can just uh, see lie the guy detector walks in, he's like, thing. all right, here, hold this wire. Have you diddled any kids? Well, actually, yeah, I diddled a lot of kids. <laughs> One of them was a <laughs> yeah. Oh, you thought that was a lie detector? No, that's hooked up to 12,000. Isn't that volts. a voice stress Enjoy. examination, what they used to call a lie detector test? I honestly the kind of I same honestly, thing where they, they measured the stress in your, in yeah, your voice. I honestly field. don't know. Uh -huh. Well, you, you have a magical device in No, I'm, of you. I'm working here. I'm, working I'm on the show. Here. I'm, I'm, I'm on the live. I'm working here. I'm, so, I'm almost live on the show with you. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> boldly described. Okay, he did the thing. Detectives tracked down the victim's mother, who said boldly and the victim had a close relationship. Mm -hmm. Fox Digital Nina, reach out, blah, blah. The victim, a female... Well, yeah, because they said it was his niece, which... No, it said it was his cousin. Oh, I thought it said niece. Nope, said cousin. Okay, I showed you when I'm an idiot. Okay, so the victim, a female, told Florida Department of Children and Families about the abuse, saying it took place over several years from when Boldly was around 14 to when he was about 19. How old was she? Oh, oh, this is the guy? Yeah, it's Ross from... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Bodley's lawyer, look at those eyes. Those eyes are just dead. <laughs> Bodley's lawyer asked that his confession not be presented dur, during trial, but a judge denied the request. Wow, a judge doing their job? That happens? I didn't even know that was a thing anymore. He's scheduled to be sentenced. Well, uh, they're on a local 24th. level. Look at those eyes, those those dyes are just dead. He has yeah. shark eyes. Like yep. literally just nothing there. Wow. Too bad because he's not a bad looking dude, but his soul is just rotten. Well, yeah, you'd have to be. <sighs> All right, your turn. <laughs> Your turn. Well, hopefully mine's a little funnier. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes, this one is funnier. Yay! <laughs> this is now this is a consummate. We got man. two we got two alcoholic Florida man stories in a row here. This is this rocks. People say often it's a crime to let a beer get warm. And I warm. agree. And one Florida man wasn't about to put that old adage to the test. Even as officers surrounded him with guns drawn while investigating <laughs> shots fired. Of course. In body cam hey, video. Officers. How's it going? 
Yep. In body cam video from the Port Orange Police Department, the sound of a gunshot can be heard as an officer is talking with a man who said his neighbor had threatened to shoot him. Eee. Moments later, another round is fired as the officer went in search of the shooter. When the officer finds the suspected shooter, later identified as Brent the Drunk McPeak, he can be heard telling McPeak to show him his hands and stay put. Here's my That's- hands, officer! Crack. <laughs> That's when McPeak asks the officer if he can crack a beer. Before the officer can answer... McPeak tells the officer he's going to crack a beer. Uh, I guess that's going to be his last beer for a while. Yeah, so for a little him. bit of a while. The officer can be heard of asking if McPeak has a gun on him. He says no, but admits there are firearms in the house. McPeak goes on to say, this beer is cold, sir. I don't want to drink it. I just want to br- drink this beer. Is that cool? Eventually, officers were able to negotiate with McGeek and take him into custody. Yeah. Now that is a picture. Look at that perfectly quaffed hair, and yet his beard just went, went to town. While police say McPeak did not have a gun on him at the time of his arrest. But you know what? He wants all the T's and all the E's and he gets mixed. And I mean, he is a letter hog. He deserves to go to jail. I never thought of it that way before. And I'll probably (laughs) never think of it that way again. While police say McPeak did not have a gun on him at the time of his arrest, two handguns were found on his property, including a 38 Special Revolver with a spent shell casing. So what? Well, okay. Well, I guess the spent shell casing. Yeah, the spent shell casing is the big deal. I suppose. And, you know, he made... He may own the guns legally. I don't know. doesn't say in here. McPeak has been charged with aggravated assault with a firearm and using a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. So Those if he two did, things do not mix, folks. If he, did, if he did have it legally before, he ain't going to have them legally yeah, after this. Kinda so yeah, have Be a responsible gun now, owner, see, people. See, this guy, he doesn't have dead eyes. He has dumb he has eyes. Dumb, he drunk like, eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he's, you know... I just can't get over how perfect his hair is and how just insane his beard is. And now, <laughs> wasted away again. In Margaritaville. In Margaritaville. <laughs> oh, there, there we go off YouTube. We're getting DMC. <laughs> Who cares? Every single episode. They I know, every single and, one. And it, oh, there's, there's no point in even yeah, worrying about it anymore. Literally it's like not episode. even mentioning them is fine with yeah, me. I, yeah, they they don't exist. Matter. Your okay. persona non gratification. So we got another beer chugger. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Fort Myers. A Florida man was arrested after a staff at Margaritaville. <laughs> yeah, where else? Uh, in Fort Myers Beach told deputies he, we, we had a Margaritaville resort in, in Yeah, Vegas. there's one at, one at the Flamingo in, in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Told deputies he was throwing beer bottles off a fourth floor balcony. So he's just like, yeah, I'm throwing beer bottles off my balcony. Um, what is it with these confessions? Maybe he's mm. going to get a job as a cop now. According to an arrest report from the Lee County Sheriff's Office, 23-year-old Connor... Another Hernia. Irishman with a name, Connor. Uh, we're always in trouble for drinking, a don't me you gurney, know? Herney, herney, a shutter me gurney, her. Never mind. Hey, hey, hey. That is my heritage. <laughs> Who's Always really? out to me lucky charms, burp. <laughs> I'll stop now. <laughs> if you had just passed the Jameson, that'd be swell. <laughs> Whose room was located just above the hotel's valet parking area? Oh, dude, no, you didn't smack into people's cars. That's just mean. Threw a beer bottle from his balcony around 1.30 a.m. When officials tried to knock on Thurman's hotel door, a security guard had to yell to him, Hey, idiot! Wait. When officials tried to knock on Thurman's hotel door, a security guard had to yell to him who was sitting on his balcony to answer the door. That is the worst written sentence yeah, it's not a well-written sentence. That had to yell to him because he was sitting on the balcony. You don't need to say to answer the door. I know. Who, who wrote this? Who wrote this? Uh, hey, Yahoo News, if you would like somebody who actually can write and or edit, I'm available. So if you this do actually, to the show, they just republished it. It's WFLA. Okay, well, TV WTF. Uh, yeah, if you need okay, an actual now. editor. All right, now we're a family okay. friendly show these I days. I didn't say a or something line. along those it was lines. Just letters. Anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah, I can't yeah. help it if that's their call letters. Okay. Whiskey when, Tango Fox. Okay. <laughs> there you go. When Thurman eventually answered, he yelled, What? What? And had a Corona beer bottle removed from his hand and placed to the ground by a deputy. What is with the passive voice? I'm really hating who, whoever wrote this is a bad, bad writer. What do you bet it was AI? Thurman Probably. was then told to pack his things. That was the person the named resort. Sarah Phillips. That was the person who wrote the article. Thurman was then told to pack his things and leave the resort, comma, but refused, comma, instead arguing with law enforcement and his and his significant 
other comma, the report stated. Okay, you're missing the comma, but yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong. Official said Thurman then grabbed an open bottle of beer and tried to chug the rest of the bottle. Don't blame him. He's going to jail. He's going to get beer for a while. And here are the screenshots of the wrestling and the chugging. A deputy again tried to remove the bottle from Thurman's grip, but he resisted. Eventually, deputy said he let the bottle go and was detained. Watch out. He's got a bottle. Careful. He's got a bottle, guys. He's got a bottle. He's got to put the bottle down before we detain him. Deputies found glass and broken beer bottles in the middle of the road, consistent with the bottles in Thurman's room. Okay. Evidence. With circles and arrows on the back of each one. <laughs> Thurman was arrested on charges of trespassing in a structure conveyance... What the... Okay. Trespassing in a structure conveyance and resisting an officer without violence. That's a thing now. Ah, but no malicious mischief. No, oh, that, that, that doesn't meet the That's legal criteria favorite. of malicious mischief. Mine too. Okay, the report said he became... <clears throat> cloaked. Unruly. Unruly. <laughs> In the back of the patrol car. Oh, my goodness. Drunk dude in the back of patrol car. I think his yeah. significant other ought to go with somebody sober next time. Yeah. yeah. You might want to become his insignificant other. Yeah. It's f- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your turn. Yes. This this appeals to me because after I've done doing this, I'm going to do laundry. So this Yay, fits in. laundry. A 31-year-old man wanted in connection to a Southwest Florida shooting this spring was found folded, not so neatly, inside a dryer, <laughs> officials said. I don't... I'll just read them, folks. Uh, David Jerome... Jer- yeah, yeah. David Jerome oh, Jackson. Names. Isn't that sad that I can read those three names and I instantly know his race? No. David Jerome Jackson had been on the lam after the Escambia County Sheriff's Office reported officials identified him as a suspect in connection with a March 15th shooting in Pensacola. Okay, now this person is a good writer. They're writing, it gets to the point, but also is funny. The coastal city is on the southwesternmost tip of the Sunshine State near the Alabama border about 55 Miles southeast of Mobile, Alabama. Okay, editor, Sunshine and State both needed to be capitalized. Boo. That's not See, the this is fault. what I deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. The home where deputies... I can't is why, turn it this off. This is why I never let her read my writing. <laughs> the home where deputies uh-uh. discovered... I'm kidding. The home where deputies discovered the suspect is in the neighborhood about four miles southwest of downtown Pensacola. Why do we care about that? Why do I, I care I about care that? I don't care about that. That is a completely useless paragraph. I thought you said this was a good writer. Well, they were until that. That, When deputies received... The editor added that. I'm sure. The bad editor. Or the AI added that. Yeah. When deputies received a tip about his possible whereabouts, they visited a home in West Pensacola, which is west of central Pensacola, and... West four of miles East southwest Pensacola of and four miles was, Never mind. Yeah. To serve and if you a triangulate warrant. using the uh, <laughs> Dolmer pattern, you can find the reverse osmosis. And by the, the way, the weather air. report for Pensacola yeah. is going... Never mind. And by the way, that mole, probably cancer. This is totally AI now. The agency wrote in a news release. He traced his iPhone to the wrong home. Wait, that's the wrong article. See, I hate it when they add an I article. I hate Eric that Gerker. Too. Arriving officers entered the home Friday and after an okay. extensive search... The release says deputies visited the laundry room. How did he get himself stuck Where they finally there? discovered Jackson folded not so neatly inside a remarkably s- looks, small dryer drum. That, oh my goodness. That's not even a full-size dryer. That's like a stackable. That's like tiny. He must be tiny. Oh my gosh. He must be. Um, okay. And he's in there with clothes too. It wasn't yeah. just him. Deputies described the look on I'll his face. I'll never forget the time that my sister thought that it was funny to play hide and seek. And she must have been six. Mm-hmm. And she hid in the dryer. Uh-huh. And I knew she was in the dryer. So I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> Not only was I grounded for a month, but oh my God, I still laugh about that to this day. It only went ba-bump. Was it worth it? It only went ba-bump. Just once. Uh-huh. Just once. It o- one ba-bump, okay? I wasn't going to kill my sister, but it was totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Deputies described the look on his face in the release as a combination of guilt, embarrassment, and warm hoisery. Hosiery. 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 As in... Um, as in pantyhose. Socks. As in socks. Yeah. He was pulled from the dryer one limb at a time. Okay, whoever these deputies are, I'm gonna, later on when I crack a beer after the cops are called on me, I'm going to crack a beer in your honor because that was a very guilt, embarrassment, 
and warm hosiery. hosiery. He was pulled from the dryer one limb at a time as he clung to his tumble-ready hideout. <laughs> the sheriff's office wrote in the post. Oh my God, Outside the dryer, nice. officials reported, deputies removed three dryer sheets, two mismatched socks, and a crumpled up tissue from his surprisingly wrinkled Star Wars shirt. <laughs> Jackson was taken into custody and arrested. Uh, uh, the the officers are good writers. I'll put it that really way. Good writers. Jackson good was writers. taken into custody and arrested on charges of shooting into a dwelling, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, damage to property, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. But still, officials no officials were no malicious oh, mischief. Good, but great. trying to dry on high when it should have been medium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. According to an arrest report obtained by USA Today, Jackson was wanted in the March shooting after he visited the home of his nephew's stepfather to speak to him about disciplining the boy. Okay, now I need a map. So his, Jackson his told him to keep... stepfather's twice It doesn't removed. matter. It doesn't matter at I, all. I need to triangulate the position, but he ends up in the dryer. Okay. Jackson told him to keep his hands off his nephew, the report reads. Jackson then allegedly swung at his nephew's stepfather and fired one shot in the victim's direction, a deputy wrote in the arrest report. No one was hurt in shooting. On Wednesday, Jackson remained jailed on $12,000 bond online jail records showed. He's due in court June 7th for a hearing on the case, and it was not immediately known if he had obtained an attorney. One will be appointed to you. Yeah, laundry boy. I just... His attorney's (laughs) name is... Hi, I'm Snuggle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There you go, Snuggles. There you go. We hated Snuggle the Bear, by the way. Yeah, who doesn't? Okay. One last Florida man for your Florida man pleasure. Hey, Florida man. Yay. Who else? That was just not... I'm sorry. I I did one more time with feeling. A Florida man. Who who else? Was arrested after he allegedly stole a school bus from the Hillsborough County School District and took it on an illegal solo field trip down south. Oh, please, please, please tell me there were not children on that bus. He said solo. He said solo. A solo field trip, okay. The Florida Highway Patrol said Daniel Saez, 32, stole the bus on Saturday night before driving it all the way to Miami. Troopers caught up with Saez in Sarasota. I love all the names of Florida. Florida just has the best names. I mean... It's no hump tulips or, you know, yelm, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> I love the opposite states, how awesome <laughs> names. Well, he was making his way back to Tampa, according to the FHP, Florida Highway Patrol. Not to be confused with chips. Says allegedly told troopers that he was <laughs> drunk. Allegedly told them? <laughs> <laughs> You don't want me walking in this condition. <laughs> he was arrested on a grand theft charge. How do you st- so a short he, article, but did gets he the hot point. Wire it? I mean, do they Doesn't leave the much. keys under the mat? I, I, mean, I couldn't. Tell I have you. so many questions. <laughs> well, folks, that was Florida Man. <laughs> Stay tuned for news of the wonderfuler. Here on Counterculture Wise, we may rant, we may rave, but most of all, we go against the current culture because we believe, to the core of our beings, that humans are good and the world is an amazing and beautiful place. At the beginning of our show, we give you news of the weird and wonderful, but that is just the tip of the magnificent iceberg that is our world. We now present news of the wonderfuller. Typically, typically, Jim finds a tearjerker in order to torture me. However, it has fallen upon me this time yes, to sir. read a story that Melanie found mm-hmm. for our wonderfulest. Yike. Ah, going to do my best here. <laughs> When a dying veteran's last wish was to receive a high school diploma, a superintendent teamed up with an American Legion outpost commander to make it happen. Thanks to their tireless effort on behalf of a man who had given his all and more for the country's armed forces, his final moments would be those of pride and joy as he was handed the honorary education he never received. 
At Sharon High School District in Pennsylvania, Superintendent Justy Glaros is a photo of her. She bears a bit of a resemblance to um, Hillary Swank, actually. Uh, got a call from Legion Post 247. The caller, 247's second vice commander, James Cappuccilli, explained that a Marine who had given up higher education to fight in, get this, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, was okay. hoping to receive an honorary diploma. The Marine, Richard Remp from Sharon, but who then lived in Poolsville, Maryland, had watched when another elderly Marine was presented with a diploma and thought he might like to have one too. Glaros did some research and found out that it was a simple procedure provided the veteran had fought in one of those three wars. Ramp had fought in all three, but he had attended a neighboring high school, making it a longer chore for Glaros to get everything in order. In the meantime, Remp suffered a fall, and when he was brought to the hospital, it was discovered he had yuck, stage 4 prostate cancer wow. that was aggressively attacking his liver. This the happened to a friend of mine. Yeah. He just, okay, guys, it was nice knowing you. Bye. Nice knowing you. Bye, Kev. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The prognosis was not much time. The neighboring school needed a month to fulfill the honor for the honorary diploma. I'm sorry. I think I said that wrong. The neighboring school needed a month to fulfill the order for the honorary diploma, at which point Glaros jumped into action. Summoning the school board, she explained the situation and got the go-ahead to print a diploma from their own high school. I'm blessed to be in the position to be able to do it for this man, Glaros said. The opportunity to give the diploma to him is what I wanted. It was an opportunity she had to hurry to take, driving four and a half hours down to Remp's home and delivering the diploma by hand as part of a graduation ceremony oh. last weekend in the man's living room. Oh. The last thing he remembers is the fact that she came down and gave him the diploma, American Legion Post 247 Commander Julian Singh told the Sharon Herald. That was his really? last waking moment. Remp passed away last Sunday at the age of 98. He had received a combat commendation V for valor. Godspeed. Wow, that was such a sweet thing to do. See, I read the story, and you're the one and crying. And I'm the one crying. You See, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a jerk. You are. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, that is such a, a heart-tugging story. And you're I, right. I looked up Hillary Swank because I wasn't familiar with her, and she does bear a striking resemblance. Yeah, yeah. If there's ever a movie made about this, <clears throat> Hillary's a, a shoe in a to shoe play. In, yeah. yeah. So. I was thinking Alanis Morissette, but I think Swank is a little. No, bit Swank closer. is a little bit more swanky than. A little more swanky oh. than than Seti. A little more sangy than Seti. Yeah, yeah. swanky than Seti. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you never know when, just what for you could be a simple act of kindness could literally send somebody off to meet their maker with joy, and. I hope I hope for everyone to have a moment of happiness and a chance to do something good for someone, whether it's feeding a beautiful red birdie like I'm doing right now or loving on a dog that needs a home or helping a dying Marine with his final wish. Little or big, go out and do something good in the world. Absolutely. Folks... It has been an absolute pleasure as usual to co-host this show with my beautiful bride. And we look forward to talking to you again next week with all new fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff on the horizon. Make sure you head on over to counterculturewise.com and stay tuned for the animated version of... Holy crap, this is actually happening. <laughs> we swear, we're not making this up. We'll see you next week. Bye. Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our Subscribestar, 
where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website. Just click on the link at the top that says, Be a Guest on Our Show. For more fun and cat pics, please visit our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. For complaints about our show, please fill out the ID10T form on our website, and we will give it the attention it deserves. Meanwhile, no matter how cruel the world may be around you, always remember the importance of kindness. Be kind to each other, be kind to animals, and be kind to yourself. See you you next next week. week!